Watch the entire video my lovely viewers, I mean from start to finish, to get the whole thing. Without wasting much of your time, let's get right into it. Hi lovely viewers, it's me again, your one and only Mtati Mpundu. Welcome to my YouTube channel. If this is your first time on my channel, kindly subscribe to my YouTube channel by hitting the red subscribe button down below and turn the bell icon to join the notification squad. Don't forget to like, share and leave a comment. Tell me what you think about this video in the comment section below. I'll be super glad to hear from you lovely viewers. We were in the subordinate court in Osaka district. Uh, I think everybody is aware of this infamous case called the People versus Edith Nawakwi in the matter where uh, the state has taken me to court uh, purportedly that I abducted the one Milton Hatembo and Feluna. These are people who live in the uh, southern province in the uh, Lusaka, in the, in the Republic of Zambia. So the trial started today. And uh, the government's star witness, uh, one Milton Atembo, was on the stand and was giving evidence as to how I purportedly abducted him. Uh, it, it was a marvel to listen to him and uh, he finished his uh, evidence and uh, the state uh, closed their case in terms of uh, uh, listening to Milton Atembo. It was our chance to start cross-examining this particular state witness but um, uh, our team applied. I'm being represented by uh, the Honorable State Council Chifumu Banda, Honorable MP, and uh, 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 Tresford Charlie uh, of Tresford and, uh, and the company. And uh, they applied that uh, they would want the court to make arrangements for uh, uh, visual evidence to be presented for the witness to uh, maybe refresh his memory as to the events that he was putting on record. So unfortunately this particular event uh, just typifies what my colleagues were discussing at this uh, meeting today where different uh, people from all walks of life and political parties go together to express our disillusionment in the government of this country. I was put away from the team. I would have loved it to be there. Our members were there and our Deputy National Secretary was a master of ceremony thanks to the team. But I would personally have loved to be there. But this is what Haga Inde Ichirema wants. He wants us to concentrate on the side shows and not focus on the real picture. The real picture is that he certainly thinks that the more he harasses the opposition, the better for him. But at the end of it all, what is happening is that he's showing his true colors. His colors of lying, his colors of anger, his colors of not providing direction for the country, his inability to govern is certainly being a, a portrayed in the side shows that he has started to, that he's been doing, where he arrests everyone willy nilly, takes them to court. And mind you, if I'm in court for the whole morning, the court is robbed of that space when they should be helping people who are in remand, people who are genuinely in incarcerated waiting to he be held by their justices but most of the space in uh, our Zambian courts have been occupied by political and uh, trumped up uh, cases by the government. It's, it's very sad and it's, it's unfortunate that we have a president whose only preoccupation is how to fix the opposition. But anyway, the trial has started. We are, we are going to cross-examine uh, this gentleman on the 6th of March and 7th of March. The court has given us two days in which to cross examine the, the so-called Hakainde sister witness, Milton Hatem. Uh, you did indicate that there was a, a joint uh, press briefing today and um, you were uh, recognized that, uh, uh, but of course you were uh, uh, represented. You are part of the people that have signed uh, you know, um, the statement that was read by 
State Council, Sakuras, Kota. Um, why do you think this is important being part of it? It's, it's extremely important. I mean, uh, the signing and uh, the press briefing today didn't start today. We've been talking for some time. And uh, last week, a group of us met, most of the people who were there at the press briefing, we met last week and said that uh, it is time we can no longer carry on as business as usual. The country needs to be rescued from the jaws of this lion. This country is bleeding. Whether you look at the health sector, the agricultural sector, whether you look at the inability to even manage an epidemic, whether you look at the inability to manage the community, and I mean, wherever you go, on the street, in the taxis, get on any uh, minibus or bus going out of town, people are saying, how can they must go? So it's imperative upon those of us who are charged with the responsibility to provide alternative governance, to get together and chart a way forward. This is extremely important because as a team, we are equally conscious of the phenomenon of failed states in where people have no hope, you end up having a failed state. So hope must be provided. This is why, personally, I think that today was a, an extremely, extremely important meeting. It's sad that I, I wasn't at the meeting, but my, I was ably represented by our team and my colleagues. We are working as a tight team. We know that the road ahead is rough. How can they try to isolate each one of us? For example, today I was isolated. I was in court. I was isolated. They will try to isolate each one of us either by phony charges or some form of incarceration or another. But I want to tell you that the spirit of the Zambian people who have come together today is one of resilience, is one of focus, is one of determination. And the determination is that our country has never been this bad. And the question is, why have we got to where we are? We've got to where we are because Hakainde basically was a fluke, he was an accident, and we recognize that he was an accident. So we also recognize that it's a duty of every Zambian, every able-bodied Zambian in the church, the students, the trade unions, teachers, policemen, everyone. It's a duty of each one of us to safeguard the integrity of this country, the security of this country, the safety of this country, and the peace of this country. It is not just Hagaende Ichilema who is charged with that. In fact, for him and his supporters, he would rather he leads amidst chaos because that's basically his nature. He hasn't demonstrated in the last three, three years and a half that he has any leadership acumen or capacity to lead our nation. So for me, uh, despite my absence from the meeting, I'm elated that uh, we are able to meet. And I want to thank President Edgar Chagwalungu the, the magnanimity of him having come back to the fort to give up the trappings of the office of a former president where they take his car, they take the security, and he's now an ordinary citizen as if he's not a state asset. Once president, forever president, because you hold secrets for the state that the state needs to guard. But Hagainde couldn't be bothered about it, the fact that his predecessor is a state asset. He wants to treat him like an ordinary citizen like you and I. But that's his nature. And as I've said before, this is the typical behavior of a person who has a characteristic of a Herod. Herod is, was an angry person. Herod was insecure. Herod was insincere. Herod was a person who didn't think that anyone else was important other than him. And it's for that reason that uh, uh, you, we really think that uh, the nations coming together and uh, President Edgar Lungos uh, coming back to say 
let it be. Let me be part of Zambians that say we only have one place on earth to live and that is Zambia. I think we should all applaud him. I know that UPND has called him names, but history will have it that Edgar Chagualung gave up the trappings. They're very few like that. We recall people like uh, General Christo Tembo, whom we went and uh, inspired from the office of vice president and inspired him to resign his office to join the anti third term. I know people like General Meander, Godfrey Meander, who left the trappings of being minister of education to join the movement to stop the third term by our, our then president, Frederick Chiluba. They are very few. They are of a rare character. They come in their own way, and we need to approach Zambians like that, because uh, let us face it, when it is all done and said, this moment, this moment will go in the annals of history that because of the steps that President Lungu took to say I'm leaving, we all now feel united, feel uh, energized that it is possible for us to save this country from the jaws of a lion, the jaws of a dictator, the jaws of an insecure leader. And uh, uh, we are all confident. I, I, I speak these days with confidence, knowing very well that I'm not alone. That uh, the mother on the street who is crying because the child is dying at uh, um, a hero stadium from cholera. The mother in San Fia who has no fertilizer. The, the, that, that patient in the UTH surgical ward who is being told, come for your surgery, but bring iodine and surgical wool. That patient is truly crying that there be a new direction, a new leadership, and a new government. And I, I, I thank the spirit of Zambians. They are all saying that their, their voters' cards are ready. Anyone I meet on the street says, Tatule landa mama, yotuma kadi, tule chitafi dasinga, kopita one week mwakunta. We are waiting for that moment, the 12th of August 2026. They are ready. And Hakain, they aren't seen nothing. The movement which is coming, it doesn't matter. He can unleash the police. The police equally are with us. The police are saying, Alana to Chula. How can you wake up every day lining up the street to get someone from community house to, to his office? How can you be told, go to Namwala, and all you're doing is guarding a farm, and wow, they are fencing it. Is that the job of a policeman? So, we are, you are not alone. If you are driving young and you are complaining that the, the rates are too low, the fuel prices are high, you are not alone. We are together. This movement which has started, it is for every Zambian, every Christian, every Zambian of any persuasion. This is your movement. We need your support. Let's support each other so that we support our nation. If not President Edgar Lungu leading this team in 2026, he promised, he told the people of Zambia that he's ready to support anyone that is going to be chosen. Uh, we take it for instance, you are chosen to lead you know, this movement. Are you ready to take up the mantle? Any one of us who is ready, and I think that uh, the common strand amongst us, and which is better than uh, the previous arrangements that I've had, and I want to be very specific, we made him president of Yuda in this home. And from the moment that we made him president, I, I never talked to him until, he, until we lost. What I love 
talking about this new leadership that is in this national movement is that we are all agreed and we are all conscious that amongst us, yes, we are leaders, but the people themselves will be able to say, hey, this is the one we want. And all of us, all of us are agreed that, uh, because this is not a movement of just political parties, this is a movement of the church, this is a movement of different groupings, the unions and all that, and therefore we as politicians can say, it's me who must be president. No, the people themselves may come up and say, hey, all of you don't qualify, but we have someone in, in Chiengi who needs to be president for us to rescue this country from the jaws of this lion. So, the beauty about the people you met today, the people who are speaking, uh, obviously with the inspiration from our former president, and uh, all of us agreed that this is the direction. I think you noticed that uh, even Osida was there in the meeting, and uh, other people were there. You, you notice that the agenda is not about I, I. The agenda is about we are disillusioned. And therefore, where are we going? We need to wrestle the power from the monster who is towering his, uh, uh, his power like Goraz on the nation. And he's taking us in nowhere, but he's only there for the sake of his friends. And therefore, uh, I think that it, we are in for very, very exciting and interesting times ahead of us. You know, there are a lot of stories uh, bordering on um, continued uh, smuggling of many men. Uh, is a trending story that you did indicate, comment rather. Maybe if you can have maybe a few words following the reaction coming from uh, ZNS. Maybe you have anything that you can you can comment on that. I, I personally uh, want to desist from commenting, especially on men who are in uniform. Because technically, they are the custodians of our peace, of our security, and of the, the, the security of the nation and the integrity of the state. But unfortunately, one General Solochi has been drawn into the polemics of mini-mill trading which is a far-fetched job description of a commissioned and uniformed officer. I did notice a day ago that he said that I must be educated. And uh, he was uh, very economical with the truth. He wasn't addressing the issues I raised. The issues I raised were to do with the importation of GMO maize by Zambia National Service. Zambia National Service was created as a service force when there are floods, I expect as we see them, when they are passing out doing calisthenics, building bridges, and they demonstrate their prolessness in what they've been trained to do to save the nation in times of disaster and calamity. ZNS was not built to be a trading outpost for the politicians. And unfortunately, General Solochi has been brought into the corrupt arrangements of Hakainde Hichirema's government in terms of siphoning money from the public. And as such, when he says, I must be educated, what am I, am I going to be educated on? Because the statement I made is that ZNS maize is contaminated with genetically modified organisms. Uh, General Solochi comes back and says, no, when we import this maize, which is GMO contaminated, it is for DR Congo. And I have said, and I summarize, that there is no neighbor who feeds their neighbor with poison or there's no mother or father who says that because there's no panado for the headache that the child is suffering you can then give them right poison but since he said i must be educated may i say this in educating general soroch 
that uh, I am a graduate of the Imperial College of Science and Technology. I went to University of Zambia not to learn security of the state. I went there to learn about economics and what to do, what to do if in fact you need to do anything that relates to trading. For all it takes if he wants to listen, when you are importing products from South Africa to Congo, General Solochi, you don't have to get an import license in Zambia for goods which are destined for DR Congo. So when you come back with a lie that these are destined for Congo, I'll ask you a simple question. Do you understand the concept of goods in transit? I'm sure you don't because it's not in your field. If there is a cargo which is going to Congo, it they come as far as Brazil because Congolese even import chickens from Brazil. Those trucks are usually written in transit. And there is absolutely no need to get any permit in Zambia from Mount Makuru to pass the goods which are destined for another nation. You can pass goods from here to Malawi. You can even import ground nuts from Angola to Malawi and consign them to Malawi with bills of lading written Malawi, countries of transit Zambia. So, Mr. Zelochi, uh, General Zelochi, I want to be to beg you that keep away from this field because you know nothing about it. They've recruited you in a field which is embarrassing the service. You are a service person. And by the way, uh, as a general, he's custodian of the armory. So when he starts interacting with me, the person he's supposed to defend, I, I, I get scared. But by nature, I want to say that uh, Hakainde, instead of going to the Minister of Agriculture to answer the question, he asked General Soroch, and it comes very clear, for once Mutoro has come out clean that he knows nothing about what they are doing, importing GMOs, because Mount Makuru issued the, the import permit, and the permanent secretary authored the letter. So, uh, you cannot tell a lie like Herod and try to cover it. Even in Herod's time, the three wise men were told, don't go back to Herod because he's just lying. I just beg uh, the commissioned officer, General Serochi, to keep away from the polemics of corruption and the polemics of trade because it doesn't know. I, I want to actually state that uh, as Minister of Energy, I could load a ship sitting in the office which is in the graph. So I understand international trade, uh, so I don't need to be educated. What you can say, at this point in time you say you are sorry, you are stopping importing GMOs. If indeed you are feeding our neighbors with GMOs, may I educate you, General, that consign those cargoes destined for the specific country, but they should be labeled in transit, and there's absolutely no need for our biosecurity department to issue permits. You need to explain that component. Don't duck it and say, no, there's measure at this pinning company, there's measure at that pinning company. Haka in the HTML has fluffed it. The way he has fluffed it, the, the, the handing back of KCM to Vedanta. He has fluffed it. He has reached a red line. For me, Haka in the HTML and his team have crossed a red line and they must go. And we don't want our officers to be embroiled in the constant turnover of presidents. We want a professional service. I should be able to be to walk into the office as a president and say, officer, uh, you are continuing. But this habit of every president goes with their generals, I think it must be stopped because they are public servants. But if their behavior is like this, where he thinks that he must tell of President Edith Nawaki, no, Madam Nawaki must be educated. Educated in what? 
On the issue of trade, I don't think you understand what you are talking about. This is not like a, digging a trench, my dear. This is international trade. Leave it to the people who are vested. The director of trade at whatever ministry, commerce, trade and industry, go to them and say, how are these things done? Then you won't falter because then you say they are just instructing you. It's better to say the president has instructed you because he's your commander-in-chief is entitled to instruct you. But don't try to cover up on his behalf because you reveal yourself as a person who is not telling the truth. And we like our commissioned officer, the way they come, smart in uniform, intelligence, and we revere them as our protectors, as our security, as our assurance for us having a continuity of a viable state. As we were concluding with uh, 2023, fuel prices were constant. And later on, uh, government this year announced that it had depleted uh, fuel in the reserves. Today, ERB is expected to announce the fuel pump prices going forward. Maybe what can be your comment regarding fuel prices in the country? Actually, ERB lied. You see, th this is a challenge that I have with the Guinness government. They lie in the morning, they lie in the afternoon, they lie at midnight. When they wake up, they are lying. Now they are even coaching their witnesses to lie in court. So uh, the, the truth is that they went to IMF and signed up an agreement with the International Monetary Fund that they were going to remove subsidies from uh, the, the, the fuels. And, and, and you know they removed the subsidies on petroleum products, on, a, on, a, on, a, on a Zesco, they removed the subsidies on several other things. Now you can't turn up in January and say, no, we've exhausted the money which we are using for subsidies. As if you're talking to, to I don't know what they think we, we hold as Zambians, like we don't have brains. So they to be the one answering. And I'm saying, leave the general alone. Don't downtrade him. He's an officer. So it lies in the morning, lies in the afternoon. Look at this thing called KCM. You know, I, 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 I sometimes I even wonder whether we have a president or we just have people who, have, who know nothing in the, in the government. Because here he is. We all know that the data is extremely broke. First and foremost, in 2011, Vedanta passed a book entry of 500 million onto KCM uh, books and said that they had lent uh, KCM uh, 500 million. Hardly in six, seven months down the road, they go back and say, pay us back. Now, this is a shareholder of a company recalling a loan, such a big loan, at a, camp, at a time when the company is bleeding. So what did the KCM management do? They ran to South Africa to a private bank and borrowed $700 million to pay their own shareholder. To borrow that money, KCM had to mortgage all the assets of KCM. As we are talking now, Concona Deep is mortgaged to a South African bank. All the assets in Chingola, whenever it says KCM, it is mortgaged to a South African bank. So, no normal person would lend, would, would give an asset like KCM back to the David and a company, a director of the company which is a group. But according to Hakainde, it's okay. Those are his friends. But for me, I think they've done it deliberately because they know that the moment they remove the liquidator, then the creditors will move in and put the company under the receivership. So Hakainde must be lining his friends to take over the assets of KCM. How else would you explain him giving a company back to a company which is extremely broke instead of talking to the South African bank to ask them to, to, to find a way of restructuring the loan which they are holding the assets of KCM. As we sit here as Zambians, the assets of Kumkola Copper Mine are mortgaged to a South African commercial bank. Lock, step and barrier. And Hakainde Ichilema, in his naivety, he thinks that Vedanta can be the one doing it. But I mean, he's doing it deliberately because the current liquidator is, a, is an official from the Attorney General's chambers. And she has been forced 
to appoint a friend of Haka Inde, Kazimane, who is a director and CEO of Grand Tonto. When you go this way, you see Haka Inde, the man is friends. So this man did not come to save. He came to enrich his net worth. It is for this reason that today I think what has happened is a milestone in our republic that every Zambian must understand that this journey is a journey that we must all get together. The train has started and the movement must move to a point where truly our country is rescued from these young men who are looting the resources of our republic. Thank you so much, Madam President. All right, that's all right for you today, lovely viewers. If you did enjoy the video, please don't forget to leave a comment in the comment section below. Tell me what you think about the video you just watched in the comment section below. I'll be super glad to hear from you, lovely viewers. Once again, I go by the name of Mutatim Pondum. I love you. Peace. I gotta go.